when you think about it, how many choices that actually matters in your life or is like altering your life's journey can you make? And when you get older, you realize really there isn't that many. Mayfield and Beloved presents Camp Here and There. Episode 20, The Trees of Boys. Conflict mediation session. Rowan Chow and Juniper Sloan. It's 11.01 a.m. on June 27th. Let's make this quick, shall we? Yvonne's filling in for me in the nurse's office, and I don't want to trouble her with that for longer than necessary. Yvonne's the nurse. Is Sydney still not back? No, Juniper. He's not. That's... troubling. Right. Uh, not that Sidney can't go wherever he wishes. And, I mean, he deserves a day off, doesn't he, that chap? But with all that he puts up with from the kids and the other counselors, the elephant guy, and from you, no offense. But he's never away for this long, is he? Even when camp's not on, right? It might be hearsay, but to my knowledge, he just stays here all year long. No, yeah, he does. I visited him during the off-season last year for his birthday. I just felt bad for him, all alone with Lucille all year. Ah, uh, Lucille sticks around too, eh? Yeah, for whatever reason. Same reason we come back to camp every summer, I bet. I don't really know why I come back to camp every summer. Exactly! Lucille's at a birthday, though. Now, that's fun to imagine. She didn't say anything about it. I don't think she even knew it was his birthday. Oh, now, that's a right bummer, isn't it? Yes. Poor lad. Maybe I'll come round, too, for his next birthday. <laughs> you wouldn't expend the effort. <laughs> You're probably right. <laughs> oh, Rowan, I say, you are funny! You talk to Rowan much, Jenny? He's a riot, this one. Takes the piss like the Archbishop of Banterbury. <laughs> I'm not teasing you, I'm insulting you. <laughs> Just says whatever is on his mind, he does. <sighs> Let's just get the session started. Ah, right you are, chap. Right you are. Jedediah. Right. Uh, I, I don't think either of you have ever been in here, so I need you to state your name and perspectives into the microphone. My name is Rowan Chow. At the beginning of the summer, me and Juniper were assigned to take fish underground to the penguins once a week. Two times now, Juniper has shirked the work and left me alone. I don't have much more to say. It's a pretty simple issue. This is a two-man job, and I'd rather not do it alone. Ah, hmm, uh, yes, uh, it's my turn, is it? Uh, well then, <clears throat> my name is Juniper Sloan. Uh, the third, actually, following in the footsteps of my father and his before. Uh, and I think I'll open by saying that, Rowan, you look very fetching in that red shirt. He likes to try to change the subject with flattery. I'm just saying it. Obviously, I like the shirt. I bought it. And I'm wearing it. And we match. You with the red shirt, me with the orange. Together, we make yellow. What? You know, like the color wheel. You mix orange and red together for yellow. I think you're fundamentally misunderstanding a lot of stuff here. <laughs> oh, mate, I got a primary school education. I know how the color wheel works. That's not how the color wheel works, or how anything works. Anything? Okay, listen, Rowan, listen to me. You're a good chap, but you've got to get this through your head. 
4 plus 5 is 9. 5 plus 4, also 9. It's basic maths. But that's not what we're... 9 plus 4 is not 5! I'm not talking about 9 and 4 silliness. I'm talking about 4 and 5. No, no, no. You, red and yellow, are primary colors. You mix primary colors to make secondary colors. That's how it works. Together, they make orange, which is a secondary color. And that's only if you're working with paint. All of this falls apart when you bring the light spectrum into it, but but either way, you're wrong. If red and yellow can make orange, why can't red and orange make yellow? Do you... <sighs> See? This is what he does. He gets you to banter with him until you forget what you were actually mad about in the first place. <laughs> this fellow, he's like an amateur psychologist, he is. Please. Yeah. Juniper, you need to engage with Rowan straightforwardly. Oh, the problem with that is that whenever I try, he says all these terribly unpleasant things. You understand that the more you avoid those conversations, the more unpleasant they become, right? <laughs> Can't get hurt by a conversation I never have. You just keep bothering the people around you. I, I mean, really, I'm not hurting anyone. You're the one who chooses to lug the fish down there even after I bail. It's like he has no grasp of consequence or personal responsibility at all. This is precisely the sort of thing I'm talking about. Jedediah, surely you can see that my position is untenable. Your attitude is untenable, perhaps. Hey, too? Listen... When you agree to help someone with a task and then back out at the last minute, you are not exercising your rights as an Epicureanist. You're being an asshole. I, how do I explain to you that you need to care about other people? Well, well, maybe. I'd feel more inclined to sympathize with Rowan's self-flagellation if he didn't make it so blisteringly clear that he hates me. Dude, I do not hate you. You're... Cool, you're fun. I know you do care about people, even if you use all these weird, manipulative justifications to get out of doing no, your own job. No, Roman, don't feed that. He's manipulating you. I'm being straightforward. You're blaming your own bad behavior on Roman's totally justified frustration, and you're trying to distract him from his anger by invoking his sympathy and guilt. Uh, I, well, I, I don't believe this. I try to open up emotionally, and this is what I get for it. It's... it's fine, Jedediah. You don't need to go to bat for me. <sighs> Juniper, Jedediah was... kind of right, I think. And that was shitty that you did that. But I still think you should hear that I don't hate you. At a loss for words for once. That is very... nice of you. J J Jedediah, uh, can, can we can can we close the blinds? No. The blinds. Uh, sure. Why? Oh, it's the open sky. He's got this whole thing about it. I can speak for myself. Oh, I I know, I know. I I worry about you sometimes, though. You know. You should worry about doing your work. Ugh! Listen. I didn't want to make a fuss about it. I don't want to seem like I'm fishing for sympathy, but I've got it hard, you know. The kids in my cabin, they're a trial at the best of times. I do my best to be a good counselor for them, but it takes everything I've got. Juniper, you are contractually obligated to deliver those fish. You're not the only person at this camp with problems, dude. Half the time, I know I'm having a panic attack about the fucking sky. Nobody really understands or respects that, but I do my best to get along with everyone anyway. And I do the work I have to do. I... Well... Not everyone's as strong as you, alright? Juniper, for the love of God, grow up! You keep saying all this nice shit to him like it means anything, and then consistently letting him down with your behavior. If you genuinely like Rowan, and you want to show him that you care about him, and you value what he wants, and what he needs, you need to prove it with your actions, okay? Your actions are what matter to the people around you. N not your words, or your intentions, or your thoughts, or your fucking anything else but your actions, and your actions show Sydney loud and clear that you don't give a shit about him. <sighs> Take care of your responsibilities. 
Spend some goddamn time with a person you call your friend. Or just shut up and stop pretending to care. Right. Juniper, I don't hate you. Don't worry about it. <sighs> He's right. I've been falling back into old habits. Yeah? Look, I'm sorry. You haven't got to forgive me, but I promise I'll chip in next delivery, right? I'll believe it when I see it. And then, yes, I will forgive you. That's very nice of you, Rowan. I keep telling you, Jedediah, this guy seems so gloomy, but he's such a pal. And really, Juniper, I like your company. You're good at conversation. And I think you'd like it down there in the tunnels. I could show you around. Oh, I'd follow you anywhere, dear lad. Remember, actions, not words, dude. Uh, righto, yes. <clears throat> <laughs> well, uh, right. If, if that's all, then I've got to get back to the office. Yvonne is probably struggling through the announcements about now. Oh, uh, will we be seeing you around? Depends. Would you be willing to join a search party if Sydney doesn't come back by tonight? Ah, uh, well, see, uh... Yeah, sure. Yes, we undoubtedly will. I'll keep you in the know, then. After log. Juniper is... blunt. Sydney, wherever you are right now, I... I hope you're okay. Today's episode was written by Blue Mayfield and Nicholas Belove. The part of Jedediah Martin was played by Nicholas Belove. The part of Rowan Chow was played by Corey Wilder. The part of Juniper Sloan was played by Tom Laughlin. Camp Here and There is the sole intellectual property of its production company, Mayfield and Belove. All music composed by Will Wood and produced by Jonathan Maisto. Sound editing by Blue Mayfield, Beetle Sprite, and Emily Safko. Special thanks to our patron, Kylie Marin. For behind-the-scenes material, exclusive canonical content, interactive events, and early episode access, consider signing up for our Patreon at patreon.com slash mayfieldandbelove. Our Discord server is a great place to meet like-minded fellows and discuss today's episode. Find the link at mayfieldandbelove.com. Lastly, if you'd like to support us, the best thing you can do is to spread the word about the show. Thank you for listening to Camp Here and There. And remember, in the same way as tomatoes were once thrown at actors, I now throw my fist into the sky. I am very disappointed by its performance.